and we are live hey what is up everyone tyler ramsby here back with another live stream or if you're watching this after the fact on youtube hold up i think twitch might be talking back one second there we go sorry about that you guys may have heard myself talking in echo and that's because i got twitch pulled up on the side and the audio was turned on so it may have been sending the audio over to you guys but what i was saying is welcome to the hack smarter twitch channel or my youtube page if you're watching this after the fact it is good to have you hanging out with me uh, before we dive into the content, a few things we need to do. One is I like candles, which I know is a little bit odd. My wife makes fun of me for it. We got apples and acorns tonight, so you can't hack without some nice just candle light. So we'll, we'll light our candles up. Oh, maybe that or I'll burn stuff down. One of the two is going to happen. All right, we got the candle. Set that to the side. And the other update just about me, if you didn't see my YouTube page, is I finally purchased my OSCP lab time and voucher. I'm doing 90 days of lab time. My lab time starts in the beginning of October, but I'll still be streaming. My streaming might be a little bit limited, but I'll kind of keep you guys updated. I reached out to Offensive Security to uh, inquire about what I was allowed to stream and what I can stream. And the answer is I can't stream anything. <laughs> like as far as it comes to their content or the proving ground type stuff, like I am not allowed to stream any of that, but I need to of course work on it. And when I stream right now, is my study time. So I may have to cut down my streaming a day or maybe even two days as we get closer to the OSCP, but I'll keep you guys posted on that. I've been knocking out um, OSCP like rooms on Hack the Box just offline as I've learned. Um, I think I've taken out seven of them so far since Sunday. So really putting in work in that way. But today we are gonna switch it up. I've done a lot of Hack the Box, but we're gonna dive back into malware analysis. One of the courses that I've been working through is Malware Analysis and Triage by Matt Kiley through TCM Security. I actually had him on our Twitch channel. Uh, I think that was a week ago, maybe two weeks ago. You can find the recording of that on my YouTube page. But he has an excellent course on Malware Analysis. Our last challenge, we did basic dynamic and static analysis. And now we are going to attempt to do advanced static and analysis. And I want to highlight the attempt part because I haven't, it's been Man, probably about a week since I've dug into the content. So I was just reviewing my notes real quick before we went live, but you guys can watch me stumble through it. And I think what maybe sets my live stream up and my YouTube page up that's different from other content creators is most content creators I've noticed as they struggle through it, they take notes as they go through it, then they make a video and they walk you through how they accomplished it. Uh, I'm doing it live, so I have not prepped this. I have not prepared this. I am learning it as I stream. I'm stumbling through it as I stream, and I just hope you find that helpful, that you can see uh, my methodology and my learning process, that it's not uh, super polished, but mistakes and everything are included. So, what up, Fox Die? That's only the best way. Heck yeah, it's the best way. I think so as well. Watching the stumbling and how you recover from it. Yeah, watch my frustration. I know I hit my keyboard sometimes. I haven't broke anything maybe if i went absolutely insane i would go viral but that's just not who i am but i do get frustrated at times <laughs> and i'm sure i will get frustrated today as we do malware analysis just because it's, it's totally new to me let me go ahead and share my screen that and i am going to i have a few messages on discord i just want to make sure they're not about the stream for those of you watching right now if you want to just let me know if everything sounds good looks good I'm assuming you can hear me if Fox Die is replying to me. Sounds good. All right, sweet. I'm still getting over a little bit of a cold. Like I got over a cold and then my kids gave it back to me, which is the joy of having kids in school. It's my daughter's in school. My son's too young to be in school yet. So I feel like I'm always sick, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and do this, y'all. Um, you see my screen here. We have... My two malware analysis machines pulled up. One fun story is I ransomwared myself uh, on accident. My Windows VM that I'm using here is a clone Windows VM from my Active Directory lab. And my other VMs have a shared folder that I share with my host machine so I can transfer files easily. Well, when I clone this machine for malware analysis, I forgot to stop sharing that folder. 
And so I detonated the WannaCry ransomware on this machine. It has no internet connection. I was like, all right, it has no connection to my host. And I was just looking at my shared folder and everything is dot WannaCry. So I managed to ransomware my shared folder. There was nothing in there that was important, but found that a little bit funny. So just know if you set this up yourself, even if you follow all the steps with closing off your network, make sure you don't clone a VM that has a shared folder that you share with your other VMs because you will uh, ransomware yourself. Thankfully, it didn't get outside of that shared folder. Um, maybe, maybe some APT is waiting on my computer to encrypt my files. If they do, that's okay. I have it all backed up. I'll just re-image my computer. No, no biggie. Um, but I did accidentally ransomware myself. All right. Let's go to our labs and see what we're working on today. I haven't even looked at the challenge, to be honest with you. Here's our challenge. Sicko mode. All right. Well, let's pull up our readme and see what we're going to be doing today. Okay. I'm just going to copy all this and pull up one note and let's go ahead and go here and we'll say, whoops, right there. Challenge sicko mode. And let's make a few folders. Let's call this one the README. And we'll call this static analysis and dynamic analysis. I wonder if we did. Yeah, we can maybe put even more stuff in there. We'll, we'll figure it out as we go. We'll make all of these sub pages. And, you know, just for a cleaner look, I like to add a little bit of dash there. This is just for my own sanity when I look over there. So it looks more like subfolders. So get our notes organized. Go to our readme. Let's drop this in here. Okay, pretty tiny text. Let's see if we can make our text a little bit bigger. Maybe not 22. Okay. Well, I guess I could just zoom in. Hold up. Sorry, y'all. I didn't realize my other text was small. I think 18 is fine. That's probably what it was at. Challenge number two, sicko mode. Analyst, that is us. Welcome. This specimen came from a poor decision and a link that should not have been clicked on. Maybe it's from Uber. Who knows? No surprises there. We need to figure out the extent of what this thing can do. It looks a little advanced. That's not a good thing. Perform a full analysis and send us the report when done. We need to go in depth on this one to determine what it's doing. So break out your decompiler and debugger and get to work. Oh man, I don't think we're going to be successful, but we'll try our best. Objective, perform static and dynamic analysis on this malware sample and extract facts about the malware's behavior. Use all tools and skills in your arsenal. Be sure to include a limited amount of debugging and de decompiling and employ advanced methodology to the extent that you are comfortable. Well, we're not very comfortable, but we'll give it a shot. So we got a typo there. Answer the, answer the challenge questions below. If you get stuck, the answers directory has the answers to the challenge. All right. So we see some tools here, file hashes. So we'll get our hashes. We'll upload those to virus total. We'll use floss to look for strings. Okay. Okay. Advanced analysis. We got cutter and debugger. And here are our challenge questions. So this is kind of like the, the homework assignment, right? So we'll just put spaces here just to make it a little bit cleaner. Okay. So let's go ahead and get our file hashes first and pull them up in virus total and see if we get in a little bit of an idea of what we might be working with. So first let's go ahead and grab our malware. You'll notice that they always do a dot mouse or anything else that, that defangs the malware. That's so you don't accidentally detonate the malware in your environment. Password is always infected if I remember right. Okay. So we have that. Let's go ahead and get the hash for it. I believe the command is SHA. Hey, I remembered it. So we have the SHA-256 hash there. I, we could also do like md5sum.exe, I believe. 
We we use either one of them. I know it's in the course. He always uses a shot two fifty six. So we'll use a shot. To, whoops. We'll use a shot two fifty six as well. Control Shift C, and let me get a new window pulled up here. Go to virus total, search, drop it in. Okay, we have 41 security vendors and no sandboxes flag this file as malicious. So we have adware, we have meterpreter, some, maybe this is a shell file, some type of meterpreter shell, malware generator, malicious, malicious, gen variant teddy, Interpreter, backdoor, malware. Okay, so all clear stuff that we have malware here. We have the details here, and I believe one of the questions was, um, what, what language? Oh, what language is the binary written in? Is it .NET assembly? I'm guessing. We'll, we'll get more into that as we move through here. We have some imports here. All interesting stuff. We have behavior. We have file deletion, deletes itself. Read software policies. We have some DNS resolutions here that we'll dig into more. All just, all just good hints. We have some Yara signature stuff. Okay. Well, let's just first start here because we'll figure out that other information manually. Of course, we could look at it this way, but we don't learn that way. So we're going to see if we can find all that on our own as we do our analysis. But let's take a screenshot of this. We'll just get a small sampling here. And we'll go to our static analysis page. And we'll do virus total is that. So we submitted our file hashes to virus total. Now let's go ahead and check out strings. There's a few different ways we can do this. The way I enjoy is PE Studio. It does take a little bit to load into PE Studio, but we'll get it pulled up. And we'll go to file, open file. We're gonna go to our malware sample. Open. And we'll give it some time. Looks like it's for 64 bit systems. This is going to take a little bit. So while it does that, we can do some manual checking of the strings. And the way we can do that is with floss. You can see my command from different malware analysis above floss.exe and unknown. We'll save it to floss.txt. Give that just a little bit, and while our PE Studio loads, oh, is there already a floss.txt? My bad. We'll call it floss unknown dot text. Maybe that doesn't mean that it already exists. Either way, we'll see what it looks like when it's done. If we open it up now, does it show us anything? Oh yeah, it's doing it, it's doing its thing. Got a bug, not like a software bug. It's getting cold out, so these little flies manage to make it into my basement and then they fly around by my screen and it drives me crazy. I usually see one at a time and then it disappears because it's dark down here if you can't tell on stream. So if you see me slap my webcam, not mad at you guys, I'm killing a bug. Still doing its thing. Oh, here's the bug. Oh, I got it. Oh no, now my screen's dirty. <laughs> Scrolling through here, you know, we're looking for anything that is readable to us. DNS records, um, command line type stuff. Like, what the heck is that? A bunch of numbers, that's cool. So here we have some stuff going on here. These are Windows API calls. We're writing some string to file. 
Okay. Some word readable stuff. Nothing that's real helpful for us yet that I see. Keep glancing through our stuff. So we have some stuff here, right? There's some HTTP type stuff. We have file name here, form data, right? All HTTP. So this is this is making some type of connection out to the internet, as we can see that. Oh, and we see we see some interest. Okay, okay, okay. We see some interesting stuff here. Might want to take a screenshot of this. So here's what stands out to me. We have HTTP client and we're passing some type of arguments to it, it would appear. And we're making sure that URL does not contain those things, shouldn't contain any new line characters. And we have this, that we're posting something to. And we're specifically sending them cosmos.jpg, which is this picture from our desktop. And the reason he's there, the cat picture from Matt Kiley, is just so we can see what happens with our data. He stands for our important data. So they are taking cosmos.jpg and sending them out here. In other words, stealing our important data and creating this password.txt file, something along those lines. Let's, this, this looks important to me. Let's grab a screenshot of it. So we'll just go like this. And then we'll just highlight some of the things that we noticed here. So this is an artifact. This would be a finding here. We have this. They're trying to get our cosmos.jpg. We have sickle mode, which is the name of the malware. And then this is also interesting. So let's pull that into our static analysis. We'll just call it the strings. So that's some interesting strings that we found, all just manual searching. See if there's anything else on here that is of interest to us. Fox Die, I'll just repeat your question, Fox Die, for those on YouTube watching after the fact. He said, is this your first crack at OSCP? Done a lot of pre-work for it. It is my first crack at the OSCP. Have never attempted it before. And yeah, I think so. Um, that's why I started the stream. And like, even if you look at my notes here, I think taking good notes is important, right? So I've, I've taken, I mean, you can see the different classes I've done. I take notes on everything. So I have everything from information gathering, scanning, enumeration, web hacking, exploitation, buffer overflows, Linux privesc, Windows privex, Active Directory, all the different boxes I've done with detailed walkthroughs as I, as I go through them. Oh man, AD lab that I have set up, helpful tools. So I've, I've taken a bunch of notes. I've done, man, a bunch of different boxes. So I hope, I hope so. I hope I'm ready. And here's kind of my plan, my thought process on the OSCP. The new format has Active Directory, which has two machines and one domain controller. So a total of three machines, but it's all or nothing, but it's a 40 point machine. Now I've been focusing a lot on Active Directory. I did some hacking workshops on Active Directory last week, me and Amoeba Man actually. I'm fairly confident I will crack the AD part of it pretty quickly. Um, I've even made my own tools in GitHub uh, that just scripts some stuff out to, to fix the syntax. So I'm really comfortable now with AD. So I think I can knock out 40 points for sure. And then if you do the 10 lab exercises, you also get another 10 points on top of that before you take the exam if you submit write-ups for those. And so I'm thinking I'm entering the exam with 50 points, 70 points is a passing score. That leaves me with three other machines that I just need to get um, 20 points on, which means I could get low level access on two of them because I believe that's 10 points or I can completely root one and that's 20 points and I'm at a passing grade and need to write the report. So we'll see in my head, it works out great. And I'm going to, I'm going to grind hard once my lab, well, even now I'm already grinding pretty hard, but once my lab time starts really dig into that and, uh, See how I do. All right, back to malware analysis. We have this. 
certxc.c. I'm going to go ahead and, and just grab a screenshot of that. And we'll drop it. Oh, let's go back to our malware analysis. That also looks interesting, which tells me this must be written in C. Oh, if it's .NET, I mean, that would make sense, .NET Framework. Okay, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Well, I bet PE Studio is done. Let's pull up PE Studio. PE Studio might be a little bit more helpful for us. I wonder if I can adjust the font for you guys. Um, settings. No. About. No. Sorry, guys. I don't know if I can adjust the font. Can I just zoom in? Nope. So I apologize if this looks a little bit small for you guys. This honestly looks small for me. I'm going to make myself a little bit smaller on my screen so you guys can see a little bit more. You don't need to see my face that big there. I made myself a lot smaller. Hopefully you can see my screen a little bit better as we work our way through this and you can see some of the details as well. So there's a few things that we want to take a look at. If I remember right, what we see right here, .NET, I think that's the answer to the one question of the language is written or compiled in or something. The architecture was 64, I believe. And we can see that if we go to up here, we can see CPU is 64 bit. Under what conditions can you get the binary to delete itself? So that's going to be more dynamic analysis. I, I bet I have an idea of how we get it to delete itself. I bet if we run the malware without setting up our internet simulator because it can't reach out to anything, it'll automatically delete itself. But we'll find out. Let's continue our static analysis before we actually detonate the malware and just see what other things we can find. So we have indicators here. The lower the level, the more of an indicator it is. So we have these flag strings. I think we can double click to go to them. There we go. Let's, let's sort it by flag. We have query performance frequency, INET NTOP, WSA startup. Now there are, there's a website he shared. Did I bookmark it? I should have it like talked about all the different windows APIs and things you need to look out for. I might have to find that later because it was a good resource. I'm sure I could always Google it, but let's get this pulled back up. We have socket close socket. Now that's interesting to me because that's usually how you start up a connection. You know, I think of a shell. If you do a, sh a reverse shell in Python, you're doing stuff with sockets. Um, anything like that is going to be socket. So I'm going to drop that here. Let's dive back to our box. Internet open, internet open URL, internet closed. So we're opening a website. We already kind of had that idea because we found that URL as we were working through this um, in the strings. But we'll go to grab that. It's opening some type of URL and posting data to it. Sending a post request. You got to get process ID, terminate process, things like that. Get environmental variables. Okay. If we look at functions, we can also look at the flags for our functions. We kind of already looked at some of this stuff. I'm trying to think if there's anything else we should glance at. We can look at strings here, which we already did. If we sort it by size. That might be a little more helpful. See if there's anything word readable in here that we maybe missed. Well, that's not by size, that's by alphabetical order. <laughs> um, let's do hint. Let's scroll up. So hint's gonna tell us this is what it might be used for. There we go, post, connect, host name, select, send. We already found that and you notice those are flagged. And I guess we could sort by flags. Oh, we already did that, didn't we? Yeah. No, I think we've done a pretty good job on the static analysis. So if we come back to the table 
in doing some of our analysis thus far, well, we could we should probably do our advanced static analysis as well. Let me look through some of these things. We already found this where it's being sent to. We have encryption. What's the significance of Houdini? Interesting. Here's what we have so far, guys. Virus Total is telling us it is sent up a backdoor interpreter, which means the shell code was probably uh, created with MSF Venom. We have our strings here, which tells us we are taking cosmos.jpg and we're sending it to cdn.altimeter.local. We're posting it there. So it's stealing our data. And then I, I don't know if it's creating this file, password.txt. Maybe, maybe if we're talking about encryption, that that, that that has something to do with the encryption because it talks about what encryption is being used. We have the socket, closed socket, internet open, internet closed handle. So some type of shell and we're, we're sending our information out. So that's what we have so far. Here's where we can get to the part that I'm totally not, not that familiar with at all. We are going to open up Cutter. Is Cutter, yeah, Cutter be the assembler. The other one's the debugger. Cutter is still static analysis. So let's watch me really stumble my way through this, shall we? All right. We want to do, what's, what's midnight theme, huh? What's midnight theme? Ooh. I like dark theme. Continue. And we are going to select our file. We'll go to our desktop. We'll grab our unknown.exe. And I think everything else stays default. This stays default. Okay, drink of water. <clears throat> All right, can I make this font bigger for you guys? Can zoom? Can I just adjust the font? Mm, maybe I just have to zoom. I can do that. Control plus. That's not zooming in. Okay. Windows, debug, help. All right, whatever. Let's see what we see here. Anything different? Nope, not so far. We have our hashes. It pulls that stuff in. Okay. Now I think we click disassembly. Let's look at my notes. Open cutter. Specify the file. I think I have to hit disassembly. I didn't say it in my notes. If I go main. Um. should just be a main unless that's what this is. I don't think so. We have strings here too. Hmm. This is some, okay. When a program is executed, there'll be a main function from which all other functions are run. The disassembler will identify where the main function is. Graph. So if I click this, I mean, you can graph it out this way. So guys, I don't know what the heck I'm looking at. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to, oh, that's not going to work. Can I throw this to the side? So if I go like that, it wants to, oh yeah, it wants to do that whole thing. I just want my VM window to the side. So if I take these notes, throw those to the side, then I can go like that. Oh no, that doesn't look good. <laughs> All right. We have this and now if we scroll down, you know, I took some, some notes as what's going on here. So 
here's our debug main or dbg main i don't know if this is the right main file to be honest with you but we have mov which is used to move data around while the binary is running okay we have eax which is memory right the accumulator register and d word I remember him talking about that, but I apparently didn't write that down. So we're testing, we're testing these things. And JE is like jump if, this is like logic. Um, JE, shoot. RET. <laughs> Call functions from the main method and returns the value. Word jump global actors. I don't feel like this is the right main file. Maybe it's this one. Well, here we're passing some parameters integer, character, character. We're calling main. Let's click through these. Oh, that looks interesting. This is CRT startup. Too complex for me. We might just end up jumping to dynamic analysis, guys. I This is, it was too long ago when I watched these lectures and now I'm just lost. I'm gonna have to rewatch them even with my notes. Assembly language is just not, <laughs> does not make sense in my my feeble mind I also don't feel like I'm looking at this debugger properly I feel like if we look at this right here this is where we see the file deleting itself it's almost like asking an if statement it's doing some type of check to see like is the internet out there can we reach out to the internet and if no it does one thing and if yes it continues to do the other thing Then we go to this one. So we have some logic built into it in that way, but I am lost. Um, Fre Frazen 2 ek I don't know how to say your name. Yeah, so I'm working on the malware analysis and triage course through TCM Security. But it's been a while since I actually did this lecture on advanced analysis. So as you can tell, I am lost. Um, but we'll figure it out as we go. We've already done some static analysis we're working on. We've pulled some strings out. We have an idea of what's going on, the data that it's sending. And so we're trying to look at the assembly language to figure out if we can see what's going on. But as you can tell, I have no idea what I'm doing. Hence why I don't do malware analysis for my job. But I do find it fascinating. So... Here's what we're going to do now. I'm going to give up on Cutter because I have no idea what I'm doing. And I have to rewatch that lecture. Close this out. Are you taking it right now, Fra Frazen? If so, man, feel free to help. Oh, Frozen Sack. Okay. Feel free to help, man, if you, if you know what you're doing because I, I don't know what I'm doing <laughs> most of the time. All right. We have, but we have some stuff that we were able to find. So what we're going to do now is we have inet sim over here, which functions as an internet kind of simulator. So the malware thinks it's connected to the internet. We are going to launch it without inet sim first, but let me just see if inet sim is working. What it should do is no matter where we go to, so if we go to hacksmarter.com, it should always return as if it's there, even though we're not actually connected to the internet. That tricks the malware into thinking it can connect out to the internet. But for now. We want to run without inet sim. So now we don't have any type of connection and we will attempt to launch the malware. And my theory is the malware is going to automatically delete itself. It has logic built into it that says if we, if it feels like we're in a sandbox, go ahead and delete yourself is what I think it's going to do. So let's go ahead and rename it. And we're going to arm our malware by deleting that extension off the end. Yes, so now our malware is armed. Our notes are ready to go. Let me just make this full screen again. 
and we'll do our is there anything the readme we need to do nope okay maybe i'll even do the readme at the end we'll just do all of our analysis and then maybe see if we can answer the questions because the goal is just to learn i don't care that much if i do all the questions right all right let's run this as admin deleted itself i just assumed that was going to happen because we saw some of that logic built into the program so that was accurate thus far so we can answer this question under what conditions because here's what's going to happen now i'm going to open up inet sim um let's see well you know what this is gonna bug out i'm gonna close this out restore snapshot restore current snapshot inet sim configured yes we're just gonna reopen our remnix box and start that beast up and i think inet sim will be ready to rock at that point in time Okay, now if we pull up our Windows box, let's go ahead and check out, see if we have our fake internet connection so the malware thinks it can talk to stuff, and we do. Okay, so here's what we're going to do now. There's a few things that we want to get pulled up on our end. First, let's go ahead and grab our malware out again. We are at the sickle mode challenge, pull up unknown, grab this, pull it to our desktop, infected is our password exit that out we have that pulled up now there's a few things we want to get pulled up on our different machines so over here we want to pull up wireshark because we want to be able to monitor any type of connections that are being made let's pull up wireshark because remember this is functioning like the internet so we'll be able to see any weird dns calls or http post requests it's trying to make so we are monitoring the network right now with Wireshark, we got that pulled up. And on our victim machine, let's go ahead and pull up Procmon. And what we are gonna do is this is unknown.exe, so that's easy. We're gonna set to filter for um, process name, we'll just say contains unknown.exe, add, apply, Okay, so we got Procmon pulled up. We got Wireshark pulled up. Is there any tools that I'm missing before we actually detonate this malware? I mean, TCP view, we could pull that up later. Um, but for now, I think we're okay. So let's detonate some malware, shall we? See what happens in our controlled lab environment, unknown.exe. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here goes nothing. Do, 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 do. It's spinning. All right, so it all happened in the background. I don't see anything that changed, but it also did not delete itself. So we did detect that logic correctly. When launched without internet, it detects that it's in a sandbox and it deletes itself. So if we set up inet sim to serve as the internet, it thinks it's connected to the internet and it launches and, and works through it, no issue. Now let's go ahead and look at our results here. Wait, where did Procmon go? Did it close Procmon? What? Did I close Procmon? Oh, here we go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It is freaking out now. We have all these TCP connects, send, receive. We have these shells going on. And, oh man, it is firing off. Like, like on a pattern, you guys get that? It, it just keeps going. We are sending out this data. Is it encrypting stuff right now? What is it doing? Let's just watch for a little bit. 
Look at that. What if we filter this and say operation contains TCP? It's all on, it's all over HTTP. Isn't that interesting? I mean, it, it's still going. <laughs> All right. All right, let's take that off. And let's look at our process tree. So here's our unknown.exe. And there was, there was a few things that I found interesting about our notes. Remember, there was creating a password.txt file or something that we found in users public password.txt. Let's just navigate there and see if there's anything there. So if we go to users, look at that, password.txt, sicko mode. So we have this password.txt file that is created and we guess that that would happen. So gosh, we're doing, I'm doing better than I thought I was gonna do to be honest with you guys. Okay, so let's just, when malware is detonated, appears nothing happens, but then Procmon and Wireshark pick up constant TCP connections on port 80 ATP. Created a file called password.txt which we detected it would do during our static analysis. There's that there. And we can show like Procmon sample. And is Procmon still going? Procmon still going. So we can just take a screenshot of this as an example, like, hey, it just keeps, keeps doing this. Drop that in there. We'll post Wireshark in here as well. So if we pull up Wireshark over on this machine, we can see all these requests here. And there, there is that thing that we were thinking about. It is, it is, so it's sent, it's sending Cosmo.jpg but it's encrypting the value. I think that's what's going on. And we have this just constantly. So it looks like here's when it launched. We're all on port 80. Now this is your standard Ubuntu stuff. Here's our INET SIM, HTTP type things. And here is where we start spamming out information. Wireshark, Procmon. Wireshark sample also based on our static analysis. Cosmo picture from the desktop. <clears throat> Which would I wonder, we're sending this, we pull down password.txt, password.txt just says sickle mode or whatever it's called. We're going to the cdn.ultimator.local. Is there anything else that is of interest to us? Just over and over again, we're sending this data out. And so this is some type of encryption. I don't know what, why is it different every time? Oh, was it not different every time? 
Oh no, it is. Let's look at our questions they want us to answer. What, which ones can we answer so far? Does the binary persist? If so, how? It does persist with all this crazy stuff here. But is there persistence built into it? We have this password.txt. We have unknown.exe. And it seems to just persist with this constant calling out to the endpoint. It's calling out to the HTTP. It's like a, a beacon that is going off. Can we, so this is 6856 is the name of our process, or is the process ID 6856. Let's keep that in mind and let's set a filter. Let's remove our other filters and let's say our parent ID is 6856. Parent PID is 6856. Include, let's add that, apply. Look at that. There's nothing underneath it though. It's just this TCP connection. To possibly be a CT server in the real world, command and control server. You know, like we're part of a botnet now. We're, we're beaconing out, saying, yes, we're here. We're alive, we're ready to receive instructions, or we're ready to send you data, is what kind of seems like is going on. What is the first callback domain? We already found that. That is this right here. You know, I don't need to type it. Let's just go like this. That is the first callback domain. And what conditions can you get the binary to exfiltrate data? I'm just trying to think of the proper way that you would do this. We would set up a web server, but we would have to What is the first callback domain? Maybe I'm getting, maybe the, I think the exfiltration domain is actually this. Hold up. So the first callback domain, I didn't see anything else on here. If we look at, this is a standard INET SIM stuff. M search. We still need to use our debugger as well to see if we can figure out what's going on here. We'll do that next. Just want to see if there's anything I'm missing here. So here's our first HTTP GET request. But this is just standard. This is a standard GET request. I don't think it has anything to do with the malware. Got our TCP three-way handshake. Still standard stuff. Oh, here's our here's so we're looking for CDN dot altimeter dot local, a standard query response. So that is our first callback domain. I think that's the answering that question. So let's go ahead and well, we just go like this box here. So it's saying, Hey, do we have a DNS record for this? So if we copy that, drop it in our notes under dynamic analysis, cdn.altimeter.local. That's going to be the answer to that other question. I mean, we can even drop our screenshot in there. 
So now if we update our DNS, there's a few things I want to try. Um, the first thing we probably need to do though is reset our Windows VM because it's kind of it'll be kind of hard to test stuff since we've already we've already ran it. We want to rerun it. Um, we want to change some stuff in our DNS record first because I think it's going to exfiltrate data that way. Because it's looking for this DNS record, then it's trying to exfiltrate data. I bet if we update our DNS on our Windows machine to include the cdn.altimeter.local, or yeah, cdn.altimeter.local right there, it will exfiltrate data, I think. That's my theory. Um, let's go like this. Let's close out our Windows VM, and let's restore our snapshot to clean state, and pretend like it never happened. Don't you wish you could do that in life? Just a snapshot, you make a big mistake, you just, hey, let's go ahead and throw the snapshot on here and start over. Hit start. Restoring virtual machine. Let's do it. A few seconds remaining. We're almost there, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, all right, we are back online. Let's go ahead. We can close this out for now. We'll, we'll restart that over in a little bit. Stop and quit without saving, that's fine. Let's make sure our INET SIM is running properly. And it is, good deal. So we are starting over from a fresh blank. I'm gonna look back at this. I think this is where I took my notes on this. Okay. I'm gonna pull this over to my other screen, but I'll walk you guys through it. I'm just pulling it over here so I can see it. I only have two screens, so you guys get to watch this one. So we're gonna pull up our Windows VM here. We use our commander here and we're going to do C nano windows system 32 drivers Etsy hosts. And we're going to go down here and we'll do just our like local loopback IP. And we'll call ourselves that malicious domain, which was Um, CDN dot altimeter dot local, just like that. All right, control O and then control L. Oh, yeah, right to that. And then oh, permission denied. Oh, I didn't launch it as um, administrator. Newbie mistake, y'all. So let's go to commander. run as administrator and then I bet it'll work make it a little bit bigger for you guys like that so same thing we're gonna nano Windows system 32 32 I don't know why auto completes not working for me okay I'll do it myself Etsy hosts there we go and we'll go down here 127.0.0.1 and we will do I already forgot what it was. CDN.altimeter.local. Control O. Yup, and Control X to save. Okay, so we updated our Etsy host file. So now it will, when it tries to reach out, it will detect that that DNS is, and I think it's going to exfiltrate data. I think. So let's re pull up all of our stuff. So we can, we don't really need this up anymore. Let's get Procmon pulled up. And we will filter by doo -doo -doo -doo. process, process. Am I blind? Yes, I am blind. Process name, we'll say contains unknown.exe. Add that, apply. Okay, go to our Remnex machine. Wireshark. 
click that. All right, Wireshark is ready. Procmon is ready. And I feel like it's gonna exfiltrate data now. Let's go ahead and get our malicious file pulled up here. PMAT labs, labs, sickle mode, unknown, drag to our desktop, infected. Okay. Here goes nothing. Oh, need to arm it first. Put the fangs back on it. And let's go ahead and launch our malware. Boom. All right. Once again, I'll say anything happened immediately. We can see this though. Ooh. So we have some different things happening now. Do you guys catch this? We have a DLL that's being loaded. We have this unknown.exe.pf file. Mm hmm. It's all doing these things. So if we kind of step through some of this stuff. Okay, here's our command line type stuff. Here's our image. We have this create file here. It doesn't say what is creating though. Can I double click it? What did it create? Uh, the ntdll.ddl, let's just look at what that is, like what that does. What's it used for malware? Is this DLL injection? Interface to the Windows kernel. Of course, that's what it is. I should know that. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, because then we have the kernel. Let's go ahead and do some more filtering. And let's say operation contains file. Okay, so we created this file. I tried to, it said result not found. We sort of by date modified. Ah, here are some of the files. Look at unknown.exe. So here is, this is probably the persistence technique, I bet. We have these things being created here, which is, it's like DLL injection, I think. I think that's what that would be called. So actually the persistence technique Might be some type of DLL injection, because um, we see that in some other places. But I could just be making this up as we go. I don't know. It'll be interesting when we look at the answers. We'll keep grinding through a little bit longer, though, before we look at the answers, see how close we are in our analysis. But that's interesting. We found that. Um, we have this app help.dll. 
it's creating it. Is that even a real like Windows thing? It's a module associated from Microsoft. Oh, might be using that as well. It's obviously using some DLL type stuff. I think that's pretty clear. I'm just not entirely sure how it is. Oh, and it's creating the file unknown.exe. Buffer overflow. Huh. So is it using buffer overflow of some sort? Like a, I mean, maybe. Just grab these and I'm just gonna circle those. Or square them, that's not really a circle. And we'll drop this in our dynamic analysis. Like that. What is this? I created this file unknown.exe.mun. Man, it throws a bunch of stuff on your system, I suppose for for persistence and whatever whatever else it's doing on here. See if there's anything else that catches my eye. I'll be curious to see the Wireshark stuff as well. Oh, look at that. Here's our Cosmos stuff. Where they're stealing Cosmos. And we're reading password.txt as well. That is of interest. X filtrating cosmos.jpg with the password in. Is Cosmos still on our desktop? Or did they steal our cat? He's still there. Hi, Cosmos. Good to see you. Okay. Interesting. Let's see what Wireshark looks like, shall we? All right. So we have that similar thing that like beacon behavior. Let's walk through here. So it's just that standard one. Ubuntu update stuff. Yeah. Here's our DNS query. So it's saying, hey, do we have this? I'm saying, yeah. Yeah, bro. Got the goods, dog. And then we have these files again. Three-way handshake. Boom. Oh, we're doing a key exchange here. Wait, what? What is this? Microsoft Crypto API? It's using Microsoft Crypto API to encrypt the files or something? Or it's trying to, right? It's not actually reaching out to the internet there. Is 
Isn't that one of the questions about crypto? what I'm not sure about how what type of data is exfiltrated it's just that long post request over and over again we'll have to come back to that what what kind of encryption algorithm is in use well we're kind of looking at it here I mean if we go We go back up here. We have, we're making a HTTPS request, port 443. And we are grabbing this, it's Microsoft Crypto API. Let's just Google that. Crypto API system architecture is composed of five major functional areas. I think this is what we're doing, certificate and code decode functions. So this crypt type stuff is what's being used. Um, let's see if we can figure out a little more about that though. And maybe this one we have to use the debugger. But we of course see this going on here. I mean, what if I just go like this? If I copy this copy just copy the field name oh that's not how i wanted whoops i didn't mean field name is it value So we have this root certificate. Oh, um, I don't know if this can open it or not. Oh. Okay. So, I mean, it's a root certificate, so it communicates, I suppose. Interesting stuff. Okay. I'm getting to a rabbit hole there. So we'll just step out of that now. Go back to here. See if we see anything of interest. There's our INET HTTP server. 
trying to get that auth root thing encryption alert we're setting up our encrypted handshake it's trying to download that again And here we're doing these client session keys. Still doing that. Let's go to where they're taking our data though. So I saw it on here. It does that for a while, eh? Oh my goodness. See, there's I see are what we're looking for. When does that start? Right about here. Here. Here's where it starts. Okay. There's the get request instead of post. Get, remember this post before, now we're having get requests. I suppose because now it's exfiltrating the actual data, right? If we go to our dynamic analysis. Oh no, there's a get request before. I don't know what I'm, I don't know what I'm saying. Oh man. Interesting. Well, let's let's try to run a debugger. Shall we? So, one more time. We are going to close this out. Stop and quit without saving. We're going to go to our Windows machine right here. Um I think we analyzed some good stuff. Let's go ahead and restore again. And we'll walk through a debugger. This will be the last thing that we do. And then we'll look at the answers and just see how close we are to what we've been working on. Honestly, doing better than I thought I would be doing, or I'm just completely way off in my analysis. One, one of the two. I'm guessing this key here is a password.txt key. that we found on the desktop. This one. I don't know what the significance of Houdini is though. Who the heck is Houdini, bruh? I don't know. Okay, one final time. Let's go ahead and test out our INET SIM, make sure we're still connected in that way. We could set up our DNS server. We probably should set up our DNS server. Is it Windows? Oh. Hey, I got that right off memory. Cool. 127.0.0.1. I don't remember our malicious stuff. CDN.altimeter.local. We'll just copy it. Oh, wrong machine. There we go. Control O. Control X. Okay, we got our DNS record set up. And now we're going to open up, I don't remember the name of the debugger. That's how long it's been since I did this. Um, 
x32 debug would we be x64 debug because we're looking at a 64-bit program i'd assume so right makes sense in my head uh, i think it's in tools is it flare debuggers maybe How about right here? File, open. Oh, I haven't even pulled it out, shoot. Labs, and we'll go to sickle mode, unknown. Grab this guy, pull it out. Infected is the password. We don't actually have to defang it to run it in the debugger. The debugger will know uh, how to run it, even with the .mouse extension. So we should be good there. Okay. Lots of stuff going on here. Isn't there? Yes, there is. What are we looking at, Tyler? Did I have no idea? <laughs> um, let's see if my notes are of any use to us. Open malware and debugger and control. Okay, well, that's totally not helpful, Tyler, from the past. How do I actually analyze it, though? You can see I need to work on my notes a little bit here. Um... Like I know these different things mean different things. Let's just go ahead and hit run. Is it F9? F9, run. Push RSI. So I know this is like the memory down here that is pushing stuff to. Um, I'm going to hit F8 now. I think F8 steps through. Is that what it is? I step over. Let's try that. Kind of looking over here. Are you allowed to use Ghidra? Hey, what up, Old Spice Body Wash? Uh, it's not a CTF, so I'm working through the malware analysis and triage course through TCM Security by Matt Kiley. And um, the first challenge is just basic analysis. This challenge is advanced analysis. So we've been looking at assembly code and stuff, and I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, I'm sure we can use uh, that program, but the one that he has in the course is this so i don't know if i'll get to that later on in the course but i'm just following the course for this challenge i have i i've used that before in a ctf though i didn't know what i was doing though to be honest so hopefully this will this will help some oh, let's go f8 so we have jump unknown.exe um if jump equal so this may be that if it if it doesn't have the internet connection as a close out then i don't know We're calling or down here so we jumped down a call so we skipped all that other stuff for now maybe that's where it checks the logic so we call f8 through here we getting a session here which is interesting some session ID oh gotcha Old Spice Body Wash said, gotcha, that can help a lot with turning the ASM into pseudocode. That's what I need. And I bet he'll get to that. I bet what he's doing is he's teaching us the hard way that does, doesn't make any sense. And then he's going to introduce us to the tools that are actually a lot more helpful than what the heck I'm looking at now. <laughs> pseudocode would be nice just to understand the flow of the program, right? We're popping stuff off, so we're moving stuff right now. I know a little bit of it. We're returning now up there. Yep and we're moving stuff so we returned interesting we have some strings over here i 
feel like I'm stuck in an infinite loop. See if anything catches my eye. There's that program there. I'm gonna hit F9. Here's an entry point. Okay, so we're, we're walking into the program now, F8. It, it pauses right here, so it's doing something on unknown.exe. And we're returning we're moving, so we're we're fulfilling some stuff in our memory register here. I'm looking forward tomorrow if I get a chance. I'm gonna walk watch Matt Kylie's walkthrough, and I bet what we're looking at now will make a lot more sense when I watch his walkthrough. To see him explain it, he's much much better than me when I have no idea what I'm doing. Or if I hit F9 again, nothing. So F9, 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 F9. I gotta, I gotta learn how to do this stuff better, guys. I have no idea what I'm doing. When I'm looking at this. Um, Oh, here's our socket connection. And that's just stuff that we already knew about with the socket connection. Thought I saw a socket. Oh. Read data string. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna be changing careers to malware analysis anytime soon. Here's our socket type stuff. Here's where we're making some type of connection. body all right we're gonna look at the answers I did the best job I could do what is this I don't know the significance of Houdini I don't even know how I'd find that you guys have any guesses can we search <laughs> is, there, is there a search feature on here how about control F? Oh my goodness. Oh, that's an instruction. Well, that's not going to help. What if we open up our strings? You think Houdini is in the strings? Yes. One note, man. One note for the win. I love, I love my one note. I mean, I have, I have so, so many things in here for hacking all my boxes that I do. Um, I'm, I'm much more comfortable with like hack the box stuff like that. I'm, I actually just registered for the OSCP malware analysis is completely new to me. So stumbling my way through it, but good to have you joining us. Um, let's, let's control F through. Oh, we don't have that anymore. Gosh. Ah, uh, let's go to dir and let's do floss.exe unknown and we'll put it out to floss.txt let's just get all the strings out of the file and we'll control f for houdini i'll cheat like that because i don't know how to control f through here references oh well that didn't do anything what source do nothing maybe i need to click something like if i click this 
and go to source symbols symbols well that looks interesting i can at least read this stuff some of the dlls it's running script seh call stack memory map you know i never clicked through this stuff all well, spice said you have access to strings plus grep yeah i do floss is kind of the same thing i'm going to do it the non-hacker way control f my way through it is that done yet i can hear my computer humming away nope not done quite yet breakpoints i didn't add any notes log oh we have a log here initializing weight objects TLS callback. We have these dot DLLs. Interesting. Okay, that's done. Oh, Houdini's here. DC stream rename. We may have actually grabbed that in our screenshot that we took. If we go back to our static analysis. Yeah, there's Houdini. So DC stream rename. And are we passing it the parameter? Houdini? Right, DC underscore stream underscore rename one. Well, that obviously doesn't help. Is it renaming it with Houdini? It's passing that parameter to identify it or something like that? I'm not sure. All right, guys. I've spent a good hour and 30 minutes nonstop looking at this. Let's look at the answers and see how close we got. And we'll answer some of those other questions. And I'm going to watch the official walkthrough from Matt Kiley uh, tomorrow and uh, learn from that. Drum roll. See how far off I was. All right. Can I not zoom in? Okay. We'll just copy this over to our OneNote file. We'll call this answers. Make that a sub page. I got the first question wrong. What language is binary written in? The binary is written in NIM. You can tell from pulling the strings from the binary and identifying the string references to NIM libraries. This is also indicated by the existence of the NIM main, NIM main inner, and NIM main module methods. Okay. Had no idea how to find that, but that makes sense. Architecture, we got that part right. Under what conditions get the binary to delete itself? If the executable is run and cannot make a successful connection to the initial callback URL, and if it's interrupted in the middle of the exfiltration routine. Yep, and we kind of figured that part out. Does the binary persist? If so, how? There is no persistence mechanism. Oh, okay. What is the first callback domain? The first callback domain is that, oh, it's the Ubuntu, which is not present in the strings of the sample. This is because this URL is assembled in a loop at runtime and therefore doesn't show up in the string's floss output. The sample attempts to contact this domain at execution. We did see that and I kept saying, well, I think that's just a basic thing that's supposed to be there. So apparently that was the first callback. Under what conditions can get the binary to exfiltrate data? If the binary contacts the initial callback domain successfully, exfiltration occurs. After successful checking with this domain, the sample unpacks a password.txt file 
into C users public, which we saw, opens a handle to cosmos.jpg, base64 encodes the contents of the file and begins a data encryption routine. What is the exfiltration domain? We found that. What URI is used? We found that. What type of data is exfiltrated? Is read in by the malware, then encrypted using the contents of password.txt as the key. And we kind of made a guess at that as well, that that was the key that was used to encrypt the data. What kind of encryption is in use? The encryption is RC4. This can be determined by either expecting the imported libraries or following the SIM steal stuff routine, then decompile the code. Much, much harder. Well, I didn't even find it, so... The sim steal stuff routine calls to RC4 method after opening the handle of the cosmos.jpg and converting the contents of base64. What key is used to encrypt the data? It is the password.txt, which is the text sickle mode. We got that right. Houdini refers to the method call that makes the binary delete itself from disk. Interesting. This method call is invoked in a few different instances, which are covered in the third question of this challenge. This method call can be observed in the strings of the binary and the decompiled output and cutter. All right, I'd give myself like a D minus. <laughs> I, got, I got some of it right, but I was completely wrong and lost on some of the other stuff. But the goal is to learn, and I learned some stuff tonight, uh, stumbling my way through it. And I'm sure when I watch Matt's walkthrough, I'll learn a lot more. So, hey, I'll just advertise this course again. I had the honor of interviewing Matt Kiley right here on this Twitch channel. I posted it on my YouTube page. So if you just look for Tyler Ramsby on YouTube, you should be able to find my page. You can watch that full interview there where we talk about red teaming and malware analysis. Fascinating conversation. But I would encourage you to purchase this course. I believe it's only around $30 through TCM Security, and it is well worth the money. I, I am just getting into it. As you can tell, I'm a noob at it. Uh, but would encourage you to check it out if you find this stuff interesting. Otherwise, tomorrow night, when I stream again, we will be pausing our malware analysis now that I'm really going hard after the OSCP, and we'll be doing some hack-the-box type stuff. I'll give you guys a preview. I done this OSCP box thing, and green are the boxes that I've completed. These are just the boxes I have done in the past two days, so I've been uh, knocking these out, at least to the best of my ability, and taking notes as I go. So we will we'll dive into some some more hacking tomorrow night. So would encourage you to come join me then and we'll we'll hack some stuff together. But hey guys, thank you for taking the time to hang out with me tonight. I really appreciate it. If you are new to the Twitch channel, make sure you follow it. Uh, look up my YouTube page. It's in the description of the of the Twitch channel. Subscribe to me on YouTube and I'll do my best to keep creating content that Hopefully you find at least helpful or maybe entertaining if you're like, man, I know all this stuff and it's funny, Tyler, watching you struggle your way through it. That's okay as well. I appreciate you guys being here. Have an awesome night and I will catch you guys hopefully tomorrow night.